tonight. Terry Downs did it. So did Alan Minter. They all added world titles to the British crown. Well, tonight we see the man who's got to the first stage as Neville Brown defends his British title. Flute on the right. Brown was one of the most gifted amateur boxers of his time. He's developed slowly as a pro. He's had 22 fights, just one defeat. But now he's champion. And he'll be out to look good tonight against a man he's used to meeting in the gym. These two have sparred together many times. Flute with very little to lose and everything to win. One of the big doubts about Flute is uh, his left eye, which is vulnerable. It's uh, cost him two fights already in his uh, short professional career. Brown getting to work early on with accurate punches to the face. Brown, the British middleweight champion, the latest in a long line of famous fighters going back in my time to men like Randolph Turpin. Flute with the inscription, The Rebel, on the left leg of his trunks. When he won this title in November, Brown completely outboxed Frank Grant with skill with both hands and feet and then put him away on a cut eye in the seventh round. It's a lively start to this championship. And the honours narrowly must go to this man, the champion, from Burton-on-Trent, Neville Brown, 27 years old, 5 feet 10 inches tall, who won the title as the culmination of four years' work as a pro after a truly brilliant amateur career. He was twice the ABA light middleweight champion in 90, 1987 and 89, and he won a bronze medal in the European Championships in the days when it wasn't easy to do that in 1987. some quite uh, vivid action in this opening round and there were some seeking head punches from Brown and Fruit coming back trying to sweep Four his own right hand over the top second. second out round two tremendous atmosphere in this Aston Villa Leisure Centre I think the greatest support is actually for the challenger Flute seems to have a huge army of fans in here. And he's got his elder brother, Colin Flute, who's also a professional boxer, in his corner. He's got a big task on hand here, though, against Brown. Flute, very upright. Very English style. Brown moving more easily from the waist, but Fluke clearly not prepared to give ground. One remembers that there is just one defeat on Brown's record when he got caught with a good right hand and his chin didn't stand up to it. A man called Paul Wesley from Birmingham did that to him in 91. And one feels that Flute will be trying to do just the same thing here. He'll know about that. There's a swelling, a very slight swelling coming up around Brown's left eye. They were working on it in the interval. So it was beginning to show that. It's looking slightly worse now. Well, 
serious yet, but it could be the start of trouble for Brown. Complete march to the ring, upright and looking very determined, and still does so. Standing his ground here against the British middleweight champion. Second round. very fast start to a fight that might have to go 12 rounds they put a lot into these first six minutes well this is uh, some some crowd here singing already at tops of their voices I think they're the flute supporters Brown looked at Flute at the end of the uh, second round as much as to say, what are you up to? You're giving me a bit of hassle here, and he certainly is. Andrew Flute from Coesley. This is what he's done so far. 23 years old, only 18 pro fights, 14 wins. Nine of them inside the distance, three defeats. And two of those defeats were caused by the left eye. But it isn't his left eye that's the problem at the moment, it's Brown's, and here it is. There's swelling around the left eye of Neville Brown. He's still working on it. Brendan Ingle, his trainer, looking slightly anxious about it too. Corners, 10 seconds. Look at this crowd. And Second out, at least 50% of them are singing their heads off. champion Neville Brown the champion in the dark blue trunks purple I suppose <laughs> Flute was uh, a reasonably well-known amateur he boxed for the young England team before he turned pro he turned pro very young he was only 17 when he turned pro in 1989 in fact, he's been a pro longer than Neville Brown has. Brown's punching just the more accurate of the two. His left jab is getting through to the face of Flute. And Flute's replies are just off-centre. Extremely good championship. jab from Brown just knocks Flute back on his heels but Flute always very quick to come back and it's quite obvious that Flute fancies his chance here he's hardly giving ground and he's always countering a good open fight there's hardly been a clinch This is going to test their stamina to the full because they've been going full out now since the first bell. The right eye flute's beginning to look a little marked. Extraordinary pace 
for men who weigh 11 and a half stone or just under. See what I mean about the right eye of Flute? It's beginning to show some marks. He's got a slight raise, I think it is, underneath it. And that could give him... That eye could give him some trouble later. So the marks of battle beginning to show already early on in this fight. Only three rounds completed. But what a pace they're fighting at. And what atmosphere in this place. The Aston Villa Leisure Centre really proving now, with an all Midland Championship proving the right place to be tonight, Brendan Ingle whispering in the ear of the champion. Bonus the left eye of Brown looking no worse than it was at the end of the previous round. Second out, round four. Neville Brown, the champion, in the purple trunks against Andy Flute from Coesley near Tipton, south of Wolverhampton. <laughs> Colin Flute, his uncle, is in the corner. I think I called him his older brother. It's his uncle, of course. Colin Flute, he's in the corner. His father, Alan Flute, trains him. It's a remarkable thing that at one time, when they were both amateurs, his father and the son here, Andy, um, were both boxing amateur at the same time. That must be almost unique, I would have thought. Dad was 40, and Andy here was 11. attack here but still can't quell the challenger who always comes back with something He never moves back from them. He always stands his ground and then counters. The fourth round of what's proving to be, could turn out to be a classic. It's a remarkably fast middleweight championship fight with plenty of skill and a lot of initiative and enthusiasm being shown by these two men. Good fight. Brown always just landing more punches and better punches, I feel. Just. Because you wouldn't put it past Fluke to produce something extraordinary. He's looking so determined. Challenger. So, Neville Brown, the eye, looking a little worse for wear now. And a graze, a, a vertical graze, I think, underneath the left eye. A few marks, and feeling the pace, taking deep breaths.
Brown made a big effort in this last round, putting a lot of punches together. It's taken a bit out of him, actually. And he's going to have Corners, to produce it again. Ten seconds. What a good left that was from Brown. But Flute is a strong fighter. Second out, round five. across Brown in the purple trunks the British middleweight champion making his first defense of this title when he was an amateur Brown beat Richie Woodhall who's the current Commonwealth middleweight champion another Midlander didn't please Brown too much when they sent Richie Woodhall to the Olympics in Seoul in 88 they didn't send him Although he's beaten Woodhall. Still rankles. Brown is the product of a Jamaican father, Jimmy, an English mother, Jenny. He took up boxing after he saw Sugar Ray Leonard and Roberto Duran on television when he was 14 years old. Unexpectedly, has slowed a little. They went off at such a pace over the first four rounds, they couldn't possibly sustain that. They went at the pace of featherweights, nine stone men rather than eleven and a half stone men. Brown has eased off a bit here. He's picking his punches more carefully. He's well marked, Brown. He's got a nasty looking left eye, which is marked above and below. Not cut, I don't think, but marked and swelling. I think also Brown has got a badly sore mouth. And he hasn't got this job over yet. Some marks appearing under the eyes of Flute now. These are signs of the sort of battle it is. It's such a hard fight. And they really are getting their punches through to the face. Right. Flute on. looks to me as though he's got marks under both eyes. <laughs> well, it's some fight. Five rounds completed. It's a pleasure, from this side of the ropes anyway, to see a fight that's of such quality and such uh, ferocity. Look at those marks on Brown. That's extraordinary. He's got sort of red wheels down the forehead and under the eyes. I don't know how they've been caused. I suppose punches that have grazed across his head. Flute still trying to get the punches across, but being beaten to the punch by Brown. Ten so a hard, hard fight here at Aston Villa. Flute in uh, those light-coloured trunks, described as lavender when he was introduced, but uh, now soaked with water, looking anything but lavender.
Flute now looking well, rather more badly marked around the eyes than Brown. This is a bruising, hard, battling championship fight. But well worthy of the British title. Still, usually the first to lead. And still the left jab of Brown. Seems to me to be the dominant punch. is not coming quite so fluently now. He may be beginning to tire. I would think myself both of them are already feeling pretty tired. They've gone at such a pace. Again and again, that left jab pops into the face of Flute. Flute's counters now rather more infrequent although he's still trying to get him across what a vicious looking mark underneath the right eye of flute a war of attrition this comes out over the ring from Flute. He's got a few marks now, Andy Flute. You can see that one I was talking about underneath the right eye. I think he's really beginning to feel the pace now. He doesn't look quite as fluent as he did before. Counter punches are not coming quite as easily as they were. And we're coming into the seventh round, and one remembers that the seventh round is the round in which Neville Brown won this title in November from Frank Grant of Bradford. And uh, all these shots, these close-ups in the corners, give you some indication of what a hard game this is. Corners, corner in the purple trunks has had some sort of terrific talking to from Brendan Ingle some sort of pep talk maybe Brendan's saying come on this is the round you did it against Grant when you won the title do it again but Flute is not beaten yet far from it nose now bleeding quite badly Brown certainly done some damage there and now Flute will have a lot of trouble with his breathing that's a bad nosebleed Flute getting all the encouragement possible from his supporters here there are a lot of them Brown's left eye looking a little worse again Brown's 
corner signaling to him to keep the left jab out, keep that left going. And that has been the key to this fight. There's a big swelling coming up underneath Brown's left eye. The uh, mark under the right eye of Flute is leaking blood. And these two are really showing signs of battle here. It's a hard, cutting, bruising fight. And these two men are really putting on a very courageous performance here because they're both taking quite a lot of punishment. And it's going to be... Well, now, the challenger flute is badly cut now. His left eye is gone, I think. He's looking in bad, a bad way. In the seventh round, is, is Brown going to win it again in the seventh round? He won the title in the seventh. He's stropping right hands against Flute's blood-soaked face. And Flute is in a lot of trouble. He's got a cut on the left eye. This is the vulnerable eye that's led him down already in fights. He's cut under the right as well. And Brown is very close to victory at this point if he can keep the attacks up in the seventh. The bell. The bell has come at a very crucial moment as far as Flute's concerned because another 30 seconds and the referee might have had to stop it, I suspect. He's got so many cuts. I think he's cut under both eyes. He's certainly cut above the left eye, as you can see there. That's a, that's a very awkward cut. I'm not sure he's going to be able to continue with that. That's a very bad cut. You don't need me to tell you that. And it's over. It's called off. He can't continue. And Neville Brown, at the end of the seventh round, has made a successful first defence. Some idiot has thrown a glass into the ring. And another one's come over my head. They're only plastic, thank God. But these are the flute supporters who can't take it that their man has been beaten. But if they saw, as we saw in those shots, how bad that cut is, they might understand. Mickey Duff, the manager of Brown, the first one to go over and congratulate Flute on a tremendous challenge. And it was... It was a fantastic challenge. Well, suddenly, the left eye of Flute went, and that might have been, in fact, almost certainly, well, if it wasn't the first one, it was certainly the second, that uh, caused the damage that brought the fight to an end. Well, it must have been something like that. Do yourselves that. a favour, lads. Sit down and behave yourselves. So, Neville Brown, 27 years old, from Burton-on-Trent, in his 23rd fight, successfully defends the British middleweight championship but that believe me and he'll know was no easy victory he knows about the left eye that's in trouble but sheer determination constant aggression a good left jab and in the end two or three right hands brought it to a conclusion at the end of the seventh round and Andy Flute will go down in the annals as a very very brave and courageous challenger and now flute is taking the cheers from his supporters and he deserves them a fine british middleweight title fight here in the aston villa leisure center congratulations but uh, <laughs> that was far from easy uh, yeah uh, um very good very a trying effort from uh, Andy Flute. but i expected that um, I wasn't too sure if I was going to come out and box or take it to him. I felt I was strong enough to take it to him. He wasn't hurting me, and it was a, a crowd please at the end of the day. It was certainly a crowd pleaser. You've wound up with a few marks around both eyes, and these strange, you won't be able to see them, but you've got some sort of strange marks, almost like a red Indian paint over you. Uh, are they caused by gloves or what? Yeah, gloves. Um, it's all part of the territory. It comes to the territory. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a hard game in there. I think to do as well, new gloves. The new red leather, it comes off and it tends to mark you. So I suppose I'll wash it off in a little while. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's my excuse anyway. <laughs> no, it was a good fight. I mean, he, he put up a great challenge. Yeah, they're all going to do that. Um, they're all going to lift themselves for this title, and uh, I ain't going to let it go. I mean, I was there in the trenches for the 12 rounds, definitely. Did you rate this a better performance than when you won the title? No, I was moved more by uh, um, Grant. Uh, Grant and uh, a very formidable opponent. and. Maybe I was a bit laxy-daisy towards Andy Flute, but at the same time, I had a lot of respect for him. And like I said, he lifted himself for the game. Andy, that was a, a great challenge. You've made a lot of friends tonight uh, on television, certainly, and you had a, an army of supporters out there. I've always been well supported, yeah. But, uh, I expected it to be tough, but um, I'm just disappointed that the cut opened 
I thought in the first round, I thought it was just a matter of who was going to go first because he seemed more marked up than me. Mm. But, uh, he still is. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just one of them things. And it's just back to the drawing board now. That left eye has given you trouble before, hasn't it? A little bit, yeah. But uh, I'm still young and I'll come back even better. I haven't reached my peak yet. If it hadn't been for the eye, do you think, were you strong enough then yeah. to have gone on? Definitely, I was pacing myself. And towards the last half of the fight, that's when I wanted to come on strong. You didn't want to back off, did you? I mean, every time you attacked, you stood your ground and counted. Well, that was the, the, the plan. Um, I know Neville. He's a tremendous champion. He's a good fighter. He's about the best around at the moment. But I thought I could beat him. But it was not to be. What do you think the turning point was? I mean, was it just in the seventh round, or, or were there signs before that that uh, things were troublesome? There was no trouble at all. I was in complete control, I thought. But I felt, I felt the blood start to run down the side of my face. And um, from then on, I knew then it was quite a bad cut. And the obvious thing was to do was think of the future and not to let Gary worse. You see, I remember you as an amateur. You were a great amateur. It's taken you four years and a bit to become champion of Britain. I mean, these, these are the moments now when you take advantage of all the work you've put in over the years. And it's a lot of work, isn't it? That's right. I mean, you've noticed I've been around a long time, it seems. But I'm only, what, 27. Um, great, great future ahead of me. Mickey's looking after me. Brendan is my uh, gaffer in the gym. He gives me the hard work. He's obviously going to give me a telling off tomorrow. I know. Um, a telling off? A telling off, yes. <laughs> very much so. What would you have done if you'd lost? <laughs> uh, I'd hate would to imagine. <laughs> More than likely, they brought hanging back. Well, it was a hard fight, and Brown will next go for the European title. Well, next week on Sports Night, we feature the Tartan Challenge in boxing with world and European title fights, as Harry Carpenter now reports. Just five days old, weighing in at six Jenna. pounds, nine ounces, Gary Jacobs' Jenna. latest success, a second daughter. Jenna joins 20 months old Jenna. Olivia as another Jenna. good reason why our European welterweight champion needs to keep winning and, incidentally, get the credit he deserves. Oh, I'd love much more recognition in this country. I, I believe I've not had uh, the recognition I deserve. I've won all the titles that I've, I've been asked uh, or that I've fought for. I've won British and European, uh, international, Commonwealth. So uh, I believe I should be getting a wee bit more recognition. Does the recognition mean more to you than the money? Uh, absolutely not. The recognition <laughs> doesn't pay the bills. So uh, I've got I've got a family to look after now. I've got a, another wee baby daughter that was born five days ago. So now I have uh, more to look after rather than me. I'm more worried about them than myself now. Although his last defence against Frenchman Daniel Picchiere was in London, next week Jacobs must go to Paris to face another French challenger, Tex Encalanchetti, a crafty boxer, but 35 years old. Hey, I think age has got really nothing. Tommy Hearns is 35, so <laughs> hey, nobody's really telling him to, to, to stop. He's had a lot of title fights. I think he had the, the European title and defended it six times, a light welterweight title. Uh, so this guy will be a very tough nut to crack. There are tougher nuts. In 1989, Jacobs tackled American Buddy McGirt, a world-class fighter. He lost. But now, five years on, with that much more experience, Gary is convinced he can be world champion. I'd like to fight Pernell Whitaker. He's the, the WBC champion. He beat McGirt, who's the guy who obviously beat me, and I think that fight was very, very close. Uh, so for me, it'd be like a bit of a uh, sweet revenge if I could get it on with uh, Whitaker. So but first of all, I've got a fight on on Tuesday and I have to, to take care of that first because I don't really look by these things. If you start setting yourself like uh, targets or you're fighting in uh, February, you're fighting in, in April, you have to get over these hurdles before you can move on to the next. But the ultimate goal for me is to fight Whitaker. He is the best. He's the best, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world, so they say. Uh, so that, that for me is the one I'm going to go for. Two Scots who have no trouble getting recognition in their own country are Paul Weir and Drew Doherty. Both face their biggest test so far in Glasgow next Wednesday. So immense is the interest, the fights will take place in the city's top arena, the Kelvin Hall. Drew Doherty, Britain's bantamweight champion, is after the European title held by the Italian Vincenzo Belcastro. No Scot has won this title for 40 years. This means everything to me, especially with my manager, Tommy Gunn. We're getting it in Glasgow, beating the Italians and getting them over here, you know, it's going to be great in front of my own crowd. Doherty became British champion in 1992 in only his ninth professional fight. He took it from fellow Scot Joe Kelly and he did it in a blistering five rounds. 
It was my first chance at a title, and uh, I knew that I'd been training hard for that as well. And this is the no way I'm going to lose this because because if you if you lose a fight, you go down the ladder, and you know what I mean. You've got to try and step up and step up and step up. So I just went out and I took it away from him. I just went out and bashed him up. That's the only way I can say it. Last year, Paul Weir became Britain's smallest world champion. He won the WBO strawweight title, seven stone seven, a weight not recognised in Britain. In December, he gave it up, and next week, challenges for the light flyweight championship, seven stone ten. There's no British champion at that weight either. But if Weir beats Josu Camacho of Puerto Rico, he might move up to flyweight, eight stone. That is recognised. Until something can get arranged for me to move up and fight for flyweight. You know, I'd like to keep state life, it was a natural weight for me. So I'd like to stay there. And then eventually move up, you get more recognition, the, higher, the heavier you are. A weird dockety double would cap their many hours of training together. It's good because the two of them keep each other company. When you're training yourself, it's a wee bit harder, but the two of them are, are fighting the same night, so keep each other company and train hard, and hopefully when the night will be OK, both of us will win. If they do, and Gary Jacobs wins, then Scotland will be back to those glorious nights in the 1970s when Jim Watt was lightweight champion of the world and every time he fought, Glasgow went wild. Thanks, Harry. World and European Championship Boxing and Sports Night for you next Wednesday. The Scots are coming.